This week, in the spirit of Thanksgiving, we're going to ignore the hyperbole and just focus on being grateful. I'm DJ Alex, and this is your Hunky Vape Global 20 Vaping News Science and Advocacy Report for the week ending November 24th, 2021. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it is the week of Thanksgiving, a national holiday celebrated in the United States and Canada and Brazil and Grenada, St. Lucia, Norfolk Island, Australia, Leiden, Netherlands, among others. Hey, Bonehead, Canada celebrated Thanksgiving last month. Yeah, I know Canada celebrated Thanksgiving last month. Oh, yeah? Well, did you know Norfolk Island, Australia celebrated Thanksgiving on Wednesday? Well, actually, Tuesday. So it's already too late for them, too. Yeah, I know that, too. Will you please just be grateful and give these people the news? I thought you said you were going to ignore hyperbole this week. How are you going to give them the news that isn't sensationalized with hyperbole? That's all the news is these days. Yeah, I know that too. Will you please just let me be grateful and give these people the news? You don't have to get testy with me. How about I just go sit over there and vape a little bit? Would you please just stop interrupting me and let me continue? Thank you. Now, where was I? Oh, yeah. In the spirit of Thanksgiving, we're going to ignore the Wall Street Journal and them announcing the surprise winners from Biden's $2 trillion spending bill. No surprise, Wall Street and tobacco companies. Build back Wall Street smoking companies. There's nothing better about this plan. Yeah, I know that. That's why we're going to ignore it. Just like we're going to ignore Denver advancing the ban on flavored vape products. Hey, the article says ban on flavored tobacco products. I said I'm ignoring the hyperbole. They aren't banning flavored tobacco because flavored tobacco is already banned a long time ago. They're banning vape flavors. No hyperbole this week. Okay, call it like it is, brother. Okay. What a bunch of crap! Ocean City Police Department cleared officers' actions in the viral videos showing arrests of vaping black teens. What a bunch of crap! These cops repeatedly tackled and need these kids for smoking. Where's the outrage over know. this racial injustice? Where's the outrage over the surging overdose deaths being a tragic racial justice issue? Where's the outrage over the 100,000 Americans who died of drug overdoses in the past 12 months during the pandemic? What a bunch of crap! The Washington Post even broke it down by saying 275 lives lost every day would fill the stadium where the University of Alabama plays football and equals the population of Roanoke, Virginia. More people died from fentanyl in April 2021 than died from all drugs in 2016. Combustible tobacco kills five times that every single year. 500,000 Americans killed by smoking in 2020, if all of them. Used electronic cigarettes instead of combustion, vaping could have saved over 475,000 American lives. That's the reason it's called harm reduction. Nobody gives a shit. I don't believe that anybody gives a shit. I believe that everybody thinks, right, that we are a bunch of dirty smokers and they can't wait for us to die away. Nobody gives a shit. The, the people who need to see this don't give a shit. Damn, boy, you hit the nail on the head. Harm reduction works. But people would rather stigmatize smokers and stigmatize drug users all while drinking their six-pack of beer, uncorking a bottle of wine, or downing a bottle of tequila. Hypocrisy rules the day. And to be honest, we're all kind of guilty of it. 
Science has proven the benefits of alcohol. One or two drinks a day, about four days a week, lowers cardiovascular risk, reduces bad cholesterol, lowers type 2 diabetes, and has other health benefits. But drinking every day completely negates these benefits. Science has proven the benefits of nicotine. Nicotine promotes weight loss, supports healthy gut, repairs tissues. Nicotine enhances performance and protects against Parkinson's, Tourette's, Alzheimer's, ulcerative colitis, sleep apnea. Nicotine also increases neurotransmitters, have antidepressant properties, and possess neuroprotective properties. Yet, this is only true if you don't get nicotine from combustible tobacco. We all know smoking negates any potential health benefit. And the reason vaping is the holy grail for smokers. Phil is 100% correct. Even when talking about young people. Even when talking about teenagers. Here's a eureka alert about a peer-reviewed publication from the University of East Anglia. Flavored vapes less harmful to young people than smoking and could help teen smokers quit. Published in Addiction, this systematic review looks at young people's use of vape flavors, reporting of views and experiences from more than 500,000 under the age of 18. Flavors are an important aspect of vaping and are needed to help smokers switch away from deadly combustible tobacco smoking. This paper even studied if flavors resulted in young people smoking. And you know what they found? Found no evidence that using flavored e-liquids attracted young people to go on to taking up tobacco smoking. And for those naysayers out there who claim that the UK people are not valid researchers, we have the University of Colorado publish the exact same question. Does vaping as a smoking cessation tool outweigh its risks to youth. The FDA based its views ruling largely on 50 studies with more than 12,000 participants that suggested e-cigarettes were an effective tool in helping adult smokers of combustible cigarettes quit. The benefit, it said, outweighed the risk of the country's youth. And now from Johannesburg, South Africa, we find the exact same controversial study claims. Flavored vapes are less harmful than cigarettes for young people. Controversial study claims. Ensuring the continued availability of a range of e-liquid flavors is likely to be important in encouraging young people who smoke to switch to vaping as a less harmful alternative, said the lead researcher, Professor Caitlin Notley from UAE's Norwich Medical School. And this exact same sentiment was just published by Yahoo Finance. Rights for Vapors called out the Canadian government for ignoring the clear science. Vapor products are less harmful than cigarettes. This is an inconvenient truth for those in tobacco control. It is a fact for those who believe in harm reduction. Over a million Canadians vape and almost 5 million more smoke. Are we really going to ignore them? and cling to old-fashioned notions of harm reduction where you either quit or die? You're is anybody going to give a fuck? Is anybody, is anybody going to care? Well, I give a fuck, and I'll bet you watching this video cares too. I'll bet you're pissed enough to go and do something. Have you written your senator about the nicotine tax and the Build Back Better plan that's already passed the House of Representatives? Did you get a reply? And if you didn't, have you called them to tell them what you think about their bullshit tax? Or have you sent them another email hoping that they're actually going to bother to open it and read it? No? Well, there's a link in the description to the CASA call to action. Go do it. Go do it now. Seriously. I've done this before.
thank you. I truly appreciate you contacting your senator. Well, I don't want to pay an additional $2,800 tax on a liter of DIY e-juice. And I'm sure you don't want to pay double for what you pay now for pre-made vape fluid if this nicotine tax stays in the bill. One more thing before we move on. If you're a shop or you sell or you make any vape products, have you joined the Smoke-Free Alternatives Trade Association? I mean, do you even know about Safada? If you don't, check out the DP show that was aired last night. There's a link in the description to that actual episode. But it was a spur of the moment show Phil had. And he had a special guest on from Safada, Shell Hamill, talking about the annual Safada meeting. It's two hours long, but you know what? It is well worth your time. And for those of you out there that are watching this, and you feel beat down by all the crap that we've been dealing with, go watch cancer survivor Shell Hamill talk with Phil. She's a spitfire, fighting the good fight for all of us. I want to thank Phil Basardo and Shell for taking the time to do this show. I'm truly grateful for bringing the truth to the masses. I'm also grateful to all of you out there fighting the good fight for harm reduction. Speaking of which, have you seen the Twitter posting from Vapor Round about the Grim Green article? I want to say thank you, Nick, for your passionate vape advocacy. You are truly an inspiration to all of us. You know what? If you don't go check out the article, let me just point out one thing. When we tell our stories, we are slowly changing minds. This is going to be a long climb up the mountain, changing one person's mind at a time. You know what, there are so many of you telling your story and changing minds every single day. Addie Tooney, thank you for being such an amazing advocate. Tweeting Congressman Raja. Or tweeting Senator Gillibrand. Or tweeting the FDA tobacco. I mean, you even went and tweeted Biden, the vice president, and I've lost track of how many other people out there. So in addition to all the links that you see him drop in all the live shows on YouTube, he's always fighting to change one mind at a time. Mallory Gates, I wanna thank you for being such an amazing advocate, calling out the bullshit with countless facts and scientific papers and links to resources where people can find the truth. It doesn't matter who's saying the crap, she calls them out for it. Tweeting Dick Durbin, thanking him for pricing out the safer alternative to smoking. I am so grateful to so many of you out there. Ghost Gunner Lizzie, Martin C, Ian Thomas, Brony Saint, Robert, and all of you out there pounding the pavement to change one mind at a time. And for those of you who can't stand Twitter, go post on Facebook or Reddit, or simply talk to your smoker friends to correct the mounds of misinformation that we see pounded in people's faces all the time. Go and change one mind at a time. The only way that we're gonna win this war on vaping is to keep up the fight against the fear-mongering bans and taxes by getting the facts out there. It's the reason I keep making these videos. Change one mind at a time. Because I know the science and I know the facts and I've experienced the power of vaping to quit smoking. I tried the patches. I tried the prescription drugs. I tried the nicotine inhalers. I tried hypnosis. My doctor even made me try multiple things at the same time and nothing worked to quit smoking. Some of those things gave me horrendous side effects. Most of those left me wanting to have a cigarette even more than I did before using their approved smoking cessation tools. And then I discovered vaping. My first vape worked to reduce the cravings for a cigarette, but it just didn't produce enough vapor to truly satisfy me. So I tried a better vape. And it worked! 
candy cane flavored e-liquid and a direct to lung setup finally empowered me to say, I am no longer a cigarette smoker. One day I was a smoker. And the next day, vaping empowered me to become a non-smoker for good. I am so thankful for vaping. I'm so thankful for candy cane flavored e-liquid and blue raspberry cotton candy and grape flavored liquids. Without these things, I'm sure I would still be a smoker. Without these flavor options, I would still be wheezing every time I climbed a flight of stairs. Without vaping, I would have continued losing the circulation of my legs and probably end up having COPD. I'm so grateful for being an on-smoker, just as I'm sure that you are thankful for finding vaping to quit smoking. But along comes Pave, crying about their kids and vaping. These crybaby parents who can't accept responsibility for their kids breaking the law have now forced Tobacco 21 on everybody. Did it stop their kids from vaping? Of course not! But it did stop my son from vaping instead of smoking. My son who's in the Air Force, serving his country like I did when I was his age, is not allowed to vape because of the misinformation these organizations spread. And because of the fear-mongering misinformation, our rights to a safer alternative product are slowly being whittled away. One city at a time, one state at a time, and even one country at a time. Here's Shell and Phil saying the exact same thing. So sick of my rights and freedoms being taken away from me because of the evil actions of others, because of the illegal actions of others, I have to have my rights and freedoms affected. That's some bullshit, and it needs to stop. Yes, it needs to stop. And these ridiculous taxes need to go away. Just two years ago, when I started vaping, a hundred mil bottle of liquid was like 10 or 15 bucks. Then, after Tobacco 21, it went up. And then, my state implemented a 40% wholesale tax. So guess what? The price went up again. A bottle of liquid now costs $30 in the store. And if the federal government gets their new tax implementation for nicotine products, that same bottle is going to cost more than a carton of cigarettes. Even though it doesn't last as long as a carton of smokes. This needs to stop. We need to stop being reactive to all this legislation and crap that's going on and become proactive to reverse course. For this to happen, all of you need to pitch in and fight the good fight. And I'm not asking all of you to go and do all the fighting, but everybody needs to do something before it's too late. If you hate social media, go pick up a phone. And if you hate technology, grab a pen and a piece of paper and write your representatives in government. Write your local newspaper and put the truth out there. Everybody needs to help because slowly we're losing this battle. Just this past week, I was flabbergasted by a new study from the UK. Employees bullied were fired for vaping at work, study claims. Dozens of people say that they've been fired, bullied, and discriminated against due to their vaping habit according to a study by an e-cigarette firm. One in five experienced negative reactions from colleagues due to their vaping, and 13 were fired from their job for not smoking. England just announced that they may become the first country to prescribe vaping to quit smoking and give a smoker a prescription vaping product. Vaping indoors is completely legal. But the study found that 75% of vapors are not allowed to vape at work unless they go hang out with smokers in designated smoking areas. I am so grateful that Public Health England has fully adopted vaping to quit smoking. And they even say 
vapor should not be required to use the same spaces as smokers, as this could undermine their ability to quit smoking and stay smoke-free. But obviously, this hasn't convinced the employers who see the same misinformation that we see from the World Health Organization. Dr. Tedros Adhanom called it highly addictive and harmful. Here we go again with the same bullshit language. Meanwhile, this study recommended that employers distinguish smoking from vaping in their policies and procedures and provide separate areas to vape to reduce the chance of their staff relapsing to smoking. And just when you thought the UK was the ideal pinnacle for vaping and harm reduction, the truth comes out. Vapors stacked for vaping at work, despite NHS rules. How ironic. Just like in the United States, where Chuck Schumer wants to keep the big boys out of the marijuana industry. Wait, what? Schumer wants to keep big boys out of weed industry, says legalization bill is passable. So let me get this straight. The U.S. government, with the aid of Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi, just used the FDA to hand over the consumer vaping industry to the big boy tobacco companies. And they tax vaping so that it's cheaper to smoke tobacco. But now says the big boys need to keep out of the marijuana industry. Something just doesn't add up here. Just like in the UK, where there has been a rash of vape seizures by multiple council officers. Over 800 vapes seized in South Ayrshire as council join government clampdown on illegal devices. And then there's this one. Massive haul of illegal e-cigarettes seized. Illegal e-cigarettes worth more than 190,000 pounds have been seized in Newcastle. That makes about as much sense as this one. Pennsylvania order targeting vaporized products upends the cannabis market. In an unprecedented move, Pennsylvania medical marijuana regulators are ordering every licensed grower slash processor to resubmit vaporized cannabis products that contain additives for another round of approval. A move that experts fear could cause serious product disruptions and financial losses. Seems like there's a little fuckery at foot here. Mm, just like in Montreal, Canada, where not one, and before 15 year old kids were told to drop their drawers to see if these kids were trying to conceal a vape. Andrew Forgion said, You're cornered in the room. You have no phone. You can't call your parents or anything. You feel forced. Canada is batting a thousand this week. Sackville, New Brunswick School reverses decision to take down washroom doors. School removed doors on Tuesday to combat vandalism and vaping. But it didn't last long because on Friday, the school said they would reinstall them over the weekend and make some new rules to stomp out vandalism and vaping. When are people going to learn? Rules are just like locks. They only keep the honest people honest. If you're a dishonest person, the rules and the laws mean absolutely nothing. It doesn't matter how prohibitive those laws are. Bad actors will always do what's in their best interest. Meanwhile, honest people must suffer when regulators keep cranking the rules towards prohibition. Prohibition does not work, never has, never will. Just take a look at India, where traditional tobacco controls have completely banned vaping. Yet the black market is full of vaping products for those Indians who are willing to break the law. Meanwhile, India has the worst smoking cessation rate on the planet. 
According to the latest scientific study published just this year, more than one million adults die each year in India due to combustible tobacco. 42.4% of men and 14.2% of women smoke every single day. Of all the adults in India, 28.6% combust cigarettes every day. You know, the population of India is 1,399,300,000 souls. Meanwhile, scientific survey proves... Indian vaping ban, a total failure. You know, the number of lives that could be saved with vaping staggers the imagination. Well, that wraps up the Global 20 Vaping News Science and Advocacy Report for the week ending November 24th, 2021. I sincerely hope that every single one of you have a very happy Thanksgiving. And even if you don't celebrate the holiday, take a moment of your time to contemplate all the good things that we have to be grateful for. I'm truly grateful for every single one of you that have subscribed to Hunky Vape and constantly leave me comments on the videos. In my heart of hearts, I feel that if we keep on fighting the good fight for harm reduction, I know that vaping will be adopted universally and stomp out cigarette smoking. So until next week, have a happy Thanksgiving, be good to each other, and keep on vaping.